Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you? If you're in the US, you're probably celebrating Thanksgiving, a sort of harvest festival where people give thanks for having enough food to eat and eat lots of scrummy food like pumpkin pie. The first Thanksgiving meal is thought to have been held over 400 years ago. Settlers who'd sailed from England to the US were helped by kind Native Americans who taught them how to grow corn and fine food. So, they invited the Native Americans to join them in a fantabulous feast to say thank you. And that idea has carried on ever since. There are lots of traditional tales about people or animals who are trying to find enough food. The story this week from Kenya in Africa is all about hungry animals. But just before we hear that story from Wangari the storyteller, I wonder if you can think of some stories which are all about food. Well, we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Are you ready? Give it a whirl. Off you go. Hello, Super Great David. Hello, Super Great Kim. Do you like colouring? I do, but I think I like writing songs more. Oh, that's a shame, because we have a new colouring book out and I was going to give you one. But you'd probably prefer some guitar strings. Mmm, new strings. Mmm. Do you like colouring, Kim? I do, because I really like choosing colours. And there are two of my favourite stories, Baba Yaga and Wild Jack and the Two-Headed Giant to colour in. OK, well, I'll tell you what, Kim. What about I write a song that you can listen to while you're colouring in the new Super Great Kids Colouring Book, Volume 2? What, right now? Yeah, here we go. Here's the song. If you colour in and I colour in, we'll all have a super great time. And if you colour one while you listen to the song, a whole lot of us, a whole lot of us, a whole lot of us will have a super great time. Lovely. Uh, David? Yes? Isn't that the same song as the Sharing Stories song? Yeah. Didn't I tell you I'm super keen on recycling? Hello, super great kids. I'm back. I wonder which stories you thought of. How about a Nancy and the Magic Pot? Remember that one? Wrap me, tap me and I will cook. Ooh, and why the sky is far away. And Baba Yaga stories, because Baba Yaga always wants her breakfast. And the magic orange tree. And Br'er Rabbit and the Big Wind. Remember the breadfruit tree. Oh, and the name of the tree with all the fruit growing upon it. Oh, and there are plenty more. Food plays a very big part in all of our lives, and that, of course, is reflected in the stories. So... Let's go to East Africa with Wangari and hear a tale about animals who are searching for food. Will they succeed? Let's have a listen to the story about Mze Kobe, the old tortoise, and find out. Hello, super great kids. How are you? My name is Wangari the Storyteller and I live in Nairobi. I love stories. And today, I am going to share with you a story from my country, Kenya. The story of the magic drum. Now, before we get to the story, I would like to teach you something small in my language, which is Kiswahili. And in Kiswahili, we call a story Hadithi. Can I hear you guys say that? 
hadithi. Perfect. So when I say hadithi, hadithi, I would like you guys to say hadithi njo. And it just means story, story, story come because the story is not here with me. It is not there with you. The story is coming from very far away and we have to welcome it with us here. Okay, let's try it out. Hadithi, hadithi, and you say hadithi njo. All right, clear your throat first. <clears throat> let's go. Hadithi, hadithi. Hadithi njo. One more time. Hadithi, hadithi. Hadithi njo. And yes, I can feel the story is here with us. Have you ever heard about a special drum, a magic drum that brings food with it? Well, let me tell you how Mze Kobe, the tortoise, got his. Once upon a time, there was a big drought in his part of the forest. The rivers had dried, the grass was dry, the animals were so thin and had to walk for long periods in search of something to eat. And like his fellow animals, Mze Kobe, the tortoise, was not left behind. And he set off in his usual walking style, slow but sure, you know. And he walked for many days until he was so tired. His legs were swollen with all the walking. He was sweating all over. His eyes were red and itchy from all the dust. And when he could walk no more, he looked in front of him and he saw a tree. And he dragged himself to it. And he sat there, and as he was sitting, he could not help but lament. I don't always come here, says the song. I don't always leave my home and come so far away but it is hunger that has brought me here. I have come to try and find something to put in my stomach. Suddenly, a strong wind began blowing, blowing dust and stones and sticks all around him, and he had to close his eyes. And he only opened them when he heard three loud thuds. When he opened his eyes, he could not believe what he was saying, for right in front of him were three ripe yellow mangoes. He thought his eyes were playing tricks on him, and he closed them. And when he opened them, it was true. Right in front of him were three ripe mangoes. But now they were rolling and rolling and rolling, and chubloo went into a hole that was not very far away from the tree. Of course, he could not just sit there and see his food disappearing. So quickly, he jumped into the hole and followed them. Inside the hole, it was quite dark. And when his eyes got used to it, he could make out three creatures. Oh, they were quite strange. They were not human beings. They were not animals like him. But what shocked him even more is that when he looked closely, he saw that each of them was holding a mango and they were enjoying the mangoes. <sighs> oh, immediately tears began falling from his eyes and he could not help but sing. Yes, the song says that it is not the habit of Mze Kobe, the tortoise, to walk so far away from his home, but it is hunger that had brought him here. Well, my dear children, 
These words really touched the three creatures, and they told Mze Kobe that they were ready to help. And one of them went inside and came out with a drum and asked the tortoise, Mze Kobe, what would you like to eat? And he was so hungry, and he said the first thing that came to his head, um, um, uh, uh, I would love some rice and, and, and some meat stew. And at this, one of the creatures took the drum and beat it. And believe it or not, right in front of his eyes was a big plate full of rice. And on the side, a huge bowl of steaming meat stew. Oh, the aroma of which rose into his nostrils. And when he was invited, he ate and ate and ate and ate. And when he was done, he was asked if he would like something to drink. And because it was really, really, really hot, he asked for a small glass of cold milk. And one of the creatures beat the drum again. And right there appeared a glass of cold, chilly, sour milk, which we call maziwamala here in Kenya. The tortoise took it and <sighs> sipped it to the last drop. And when he was done, the creature said, you can have this magic drum because we ate your mangoes. Use this drum to feed the animals in your side of the forest. And he was so happy, he said thank you and goodbye. And he went out of the hall and carried his drum on his back, ready to feed all the animals. Now tell me, my super great kids, if you are in the forest, where Mze Kobe, the tortoise, lived. And he is right here with his drum. What would you want to eat? Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Yes, the one who is sitting here listening to me. What would you like to eat? Did I hear you say pizza? All right. Ekorea pizza. Ekorea pizza. Nekiro mageto mete oke. Hae. 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 What about you, my friend? Yes, what did you like to have? Did I hear you say chips? You want some fries, some chips? Okay, all right. You can have some as well. Ekorea waru. Ekorea waru. Nekiro mageto mete oke. Hae. 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 And this is exactly what the tortoise Mze Kobe would do every single day. He would wake up, prepare himself, take his drum, and go and feed the animals breakfast. And after a while, the animals changed in their habits. Earlier, they were quite hardworking, going to look for their own food. But now, they would just have their breakfast and sit under the shade of trees, waiting for Mze Kobe to bring them lunch. And after lunch, they would take a long nap and... <coughs> snow, waiting for him to bring them dinner. And I can tell you all they did all day in the forest was to gossip. Hey, 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 Mr. Rabbit, tell me, what did you eat yesterday? Oh, yo, 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 me, I ate ugali and omena and it was mwah, delicious. Well, my dear friends, ugali is one of the staple foods that we eat here, and it is made from maize flour. And omena are small, tiny fish that we like eating with our food sometimes here. And really, it is a delicacy. And on the other hand, you could hear the hyena saying, What is wrong with you, rabbit? Every day you eat ugali and omena, ugali and omena. What is wrong with you? Have you tried to eat chapati and meat stew? Oh, 
I tell you, it is just heavenly. And of course, all this talk would make them feel very hungry, and they would march to Mzee Kobe's house. And if there were many, they would make a queue outside his house. But one day, one day, so many animals arrived at Mzee Kobe's house, and all of them wanted to be the first. And so, a big argument appeared about who would go first. And with the argument, they began kicking and grabbing. And one of them reached for the drum and grabbed it from the Kobe, the tortoise. And the animals with the sharp claws used their claws to claw at the drum. Those who had long and sharp horns used them to beat the drum. And those who have big, heavy legs, like the buffalo, used them to step on the drum. And even those small animals like rats and moles with very sharp teeth used them to bite at the drum. And when the elephant arrived, he used his long nose to pull the drum to his side. And there was a huge commotion and the animals only stopped when they heard one loud bang. The magic drum had passed open. And from inside the drum came out a swarm of bees, a big, angry swarm of bees, and zzz, they began attacking the animals mercilessly. Zzz, the animals took off to avoid those bees, and the bees zzz, followed them all the way to their homes. And when Mze Kobe saw that things had gone haywire, he would put his head and his legs in his shell and he hid himself until all was clear. And on arriving back in the forest, most of the animals had wounds and bruises all over their bodies by being stung by the bees. Others had broken limbs caused by the frequent falling as they were running away. And from that day, the animals in that part of the forest learned a painful lesson. That if you want anything, you must work hard for it. You must not be lazy. And if someone gives you something, you should appreciate their gesture. And so they say that if you go to the forest late at night, especially when things are really hard, you might just be the chosen few to hear the animals singing. Oh, thank you very much, Wangari, for sharing that story. Would you like a magic drum? I think I would, but maybe only to use on weekdays and for me to cook myself at weekends. I love cooking, so I'd miss it if everything was provided by a magic drum. What do you think? And I wonder what your grown-ups think. Now, there's a song which rather fits with Thanksgiving and family celebrations, which is called Everybody Eats When They Come To My House. And it goes, have a banana, Hannah, try the salami, Tommy, get with the gravy, Davy. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Look it up if you don't already know it. It's sung by a man called Cab Calloway, and it's a firm favourite in our house. Now... We really love hearing from you, so it's time to dig deep into our bag of happies and say some thank yous. Thanks first to lots of new owlets who've been flip-flap flying into our nest. And hello to new owlet Aspen, who recently turned six. Aspen lives in Ontario in Canada, and her favourite stories are... The Anansi Stories. Welcome, Aspen. And hoo, 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 and hello to new owlet, six-year-old Heaver in Toronto in Canada. 
Eva also loves the Anansi stories, particularly those told by Toop. And ooh, 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 to Atlas from the island of Maui in Hawaii, who recently turned six. Atlas listens to stories on the way to school. Her favourite is Anansi and the Party. Lots of Anansi fans this week. And hoo 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 hoo! And hello to super great story fan Jensen, who is seven and lives in the Cayman Islands. And hoo 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 hoo! And hello to new owlet Graham, who is nine from Riverton in Utah in the US. And hoo 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 hoo! To Ronan, who is six, and to his little sister Lucy from Ottawa in Canada. One of Ronan's favourite Super Great Kids stories are, are the ones with a Nancy. He particularly likes a Nancy and the magic yams. And finally, hoo 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 to seven year old Emery from Oklahoma, who particularly likes Baba Yaga. Emery drew a picture of the story Baba Yaga and Little Brother. She drew Baba Yaga, the crows, the trees and her house. She gave the crow an extra big beak like Baba Yaga's long nose. I love the twirly-whirly patterns you've used on your crow and I really like the bright colours you've chosen too, Emery. Thank you. And a very special thank you to Owlets and super great fans, William and Mum Jonah in Florida for your kindness and support. And a very big thanks to all of you who've been supporting us on Apple, Patreon and Ko-fi. Your one-off donations and subscriptions really help us to keep producing Super Great Kids stories and to pay our storytellers. If you'd like to support us, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, which you'll find on our website, supergreatkidsstories.com. All subscribers get a mention if you let us know you like one. So do get in touch with us via our Facebook Messenger if you'd like a shout-out. And now, it's a pick-a-picture time. So, you're all so good at drawing and it's very hard to choose, but here are my picture picks for this week. Thank you to seven-year-old Emma from Faversham and Kent here in the UK for her lovely picture of Omumbo Rogunga Gabango Tree. Do you remember that tricky name? It's from the story, The Name of the Tree. And Emma has drawn a beautiful picture of the tree with all the different fruit hanging from it. Thank you, Emma. I was in Kent recently and I saw that there were still strawberries growing on the farms in October. Amazing. I didn't see any strawberries growing on trees, though. That would be magical. And thanks to new outlets from Florida, James, who is seven, and his sister Melody, who is six. They've sent in pictures of two super great scary stories. James has drawn the ghost of the bloody finger. No wonder that ghost needed a plaster, James, to stop all the blood dripping everywhere. And Melody has drawn the hairy, scary toe. Possibly the hairiest toe I've ever seen. I especially like the long, multicoloured toenails. A delicious, crunchy addition to the stew. Yum, yum. Hope you like the subscriber scary stories. There's a good one coming up for December. And Clara, who is six and lives in Wollongong in Australia, listened to the story of Wild Jack and the Two-Headed Giant and was then inspired to draw a 12-headed giantess. Jack is playing his flute in the sack and Clara tells us that the giantess is dancing, so she must be enjoying the tune that Jack is playing. A super imaginative picture, Clara. Thank you. If you'd like to see those pictures and all the artwork in our Super Great Kids gallery, then go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Super Great Kids Stories. That's it for this week, and thanks for all your pictures and messages. Oh, and remember, thanks for your patience. Our new colouring book, too, is now out on Amazon. So get your pencil cases and paint boxes out and do share the pictures with us. I'd love to see how you colour them. To find it, 
Search for Super Great Kids Stories Colouring Book on Amazon or visit our website, supergreatkidsstories.com and follow the links. Bye for now. Keep telling those stories and singing your songs. This podcast was produced in Wardour Studios in London. London.